Throughout time, there have been many famous rivalries. Michelangelo versus Leonardo da Vinci, Aaron Burr versus Alexander Hamilton, Nikola Tesla versus Thomas Edison, and most famously, Burr versus Ernie. Today's matchup in no way rivals any of those, but it is still epic. Two titans of the watch homage world going head to head to see who is king and who is a second slightly lesser king. So join us on this journey because, let's face it, this is way more interesting than mowing the grass on a Saturday morning. Welcome to Watch Me Go Broke. I am absolutely thrilled to bring you this head-to-head -to -head today, but first on my wrist today is going to be the Timex Q. I've got it on a jingly jangly uh, jubilee I had gotten from Amazon, and I think it works pretty good, especially when your arms are getting uh, rather hairy. The Timex Q bracelet is uh, quite a bit of a hair puller, so... And another thing, guys, if your arm hair is getting so long that it's starting to cover up the watch, you definitely need to think about a trim, so I think I'm uh, due for one of those pretty soon. So we are ready for the epic battle today, but before we start, a couple of things I need to go over. Number one, the movement will not be a factor in today's competition. They both run the NH35A movement. It's a 21,600 vibrations per hour movement with a 41-hour power reserve. Good reliable movement, so not a factor in today's decision. And the second disclosure today, this had actually been requested as a head-to-head -head from several viewers uh, about six months ago whenever I did the uh, Heimdaller sub review. And they wanted me to put it up against the San Martin sub homage version 1. And at the time, I didn't think that the version 1 of the San Martin really would be able to compare to the Heimdaller. Not to say that it's not, it wasn't a great watch, it really was, but there were some things that I felt like might take it out of the running uh, to be something that could compete with this particular watch. The first thing was the bracelet on version one had polished center links. That's not uh, the sub that we know today. Uh, the, uh, the current uh, Submariner uh, has all brushed links as both of these do today. And the second thing was the clasp, I felt, wasn't something that really could compare to uh, the one on the Heimdaller at the time. And that clasp on the San Martin version one is reportedly to be uh, very, very good. So, you know, but there was a, those couple of factors, I just felt like, you know, there really would be scores that, that wouldn't be overly fair to it. Uh, since I am trying to make this comparison be the best sub homage that I think you could possibly get. So having said that, number three, I do not hold a degree in horology. Well, I mean, I do hold a degree in horology, but it's not spelled the same. <laughs> oh. oh, yes. So this is just my opinion, guys. So try not to rake me over the coals over who is the uh, big winner today if uh, you don't agree with it. But I do want to hear your uh, thoughts and opinions in the comments. So let's get started. The first category is going to be case finishing. So to be honest, the case finishing on both watches is a mixture of brushed and polished, uh, polished on the sides and brushed on the top of the lugs. And to be completely honest with you, I can't really tell too much of a difference between the two uh, regarding case finishing. Uh, they both have high mirror polish. Uh, they both look really, really good. Um, they are virtually identical almost in size. But one thing I am going to uh, include in case finishing is the Reholt. And on the Heimdaller, they have etched, albeit not overly impressively, uh, the Reholt is actually uh, etched all the way around. And the San Martin uh, does not have anything. It's just a uh, flat brushed Reholt there. So a little bit of a, a detail that is uh, missing on the San Martin. So. As far as case finishing goes, overall, they are pretty much identical, but I'm going to give one extra point to the Heimdaller 
just because of that Reholt. Agree with me or disagree with me, but that's the way it is. So the Heimdaller uh, case finishing uh, gets a 9, and the San Martin gets an 8. And the next category is going to be the dial. And I should address something. I'm sure this will come up in the comments. Why did you compare the green version of the San Martin to the black version of the Heimdaller? And the truth be told is I didn't want two black sub homage watches uh, of this quality. I wanted a, a green and a black one. Uh, as of yet, I do not flip these watches, so they do stay in my collection. Um, I guess I'm one of the rare guys on uh, youtube that does that but uh yeah so i just wanted a green and i felt like of course i have the green uh pagani design but that was the sizes are, are, are all wrong on that one so yeah so the dial on the heim dollar is uh, very well done the indices are highly polished all the way around you've got san martin just below the 12 o'clock and then automatic 200 Really not a whole lot to complain about this dial. All the writing is crisp, and the uh, window of the Cyclops uh, looks very good. Uh, the magnification is really good on there. Uh, the date window is cut nicely to where you can see uh, everything that you need to see. So the San Martin will actually get a 6 on the dial. And you're probably asking yourself, why does the San Martin get a 6 on the dial? Well, I like a lot of writing on my dials, especially if it's a sub homage. Um, I believe the uh, the current version of the uh, Rolex Submariner has four lines of text. So I like the fact that Heimdallar did a little extra and put three lines of text. Um, so, so that really was a, a deciding factor for me. I think overall uh, it, it aids in the symmetry of the dial whether you agree with me or not, but all the uh, indices are also highly polished. They don't appear to be quite as uh, thick as what is on the San Martin, but uh, all in all, I think the dial, with uh, it just looks really, really good. Everything is uh, pretty much the same as far as the Cyclops goes, the window's good. All in all, pretty good, and the dial on the Heimdaller will get an eight. Now, before you shut this video off, thinking I'm kind of rigging this up for the Heimdaller, uh, we still have five categories to go, so uh, please bear with me. I'm sure things will shake out. The next category is going to be the bezel. So, all in all, the uh, the bezel is going to include bezel action. Uh, these They both have ceramic bezel insert and the loom pip. So, the action on the Heimdaller. When I first received this watch, it was very, very tight. Um, it was hard to move. Uh, that has since changed. Uh, it is actually um, loosened up and it's pretty good. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of complaints with it. Uh, it's, you know, I think a pretty solid bezel. I know there's some other reviews out there that say that it's total crap. I have not found that to be the case. And the loom pip uh, is, uh, pretty well done it's slightly off center i don't think you can really tell too much in camera but it, it skews to the right just a little bit just a fraction uh but still all in all a, a very good effort uh the uh, etching of the numbers on the ceramic bezel they all look very very good and so i am going to give the heimdaller a seven on the bezel so the San Martin bezel, it is also ceramic. Uh, the etching on it is also very, very good. Maybe slightly deeper than what is on the Heimdaller, uh, just on the surface there. Uh, the loom pip is uh, pretty recessed. I kind of don't really like that. Um, it, Like I said in my review of it, it, it reminds me of the Tudor Pelagos or Pelagos, however you say it, it, it does look like that uh, loom pip uh, for sure and then you get the bezel action uh the bezel action on this san martin uh you really notice it switching between the two watches that the san martin uh the action on this is just superb compared to the heimdaller so i think there's really no question about a winner here even though you know loom pip points i don't know yeah they, they, it probably just kind of shakes out with the, the other one being off-center and that one just being not the right style. 
But um, yeah, this action on this San Martin is outstanding. So it is going to get a nine. So the next category is the bracelet, and the bracelet on the Heimdaller is a mixture of brushed on the tops and on the sides of the lugs. It is polished. This is a pin and collar uh, bracelet. Uh, I really, really like this bracelet, although it has been to the jeweler three times to be sized uh, differently because I just I just struggle with pin and collar. I know you guys out there say it's the most secure way of uh, securing a bracelet, but I don't know. I mean, I guess so. But the links on this uh, Heimdaller are just ever so slightly, a couple of tenths of a millimeter thinner uh, than what is on the San Martin. I think this bracelet is just really, really good. Now, uh, there is a bit of protrusion. Uh, this end link does protrude out quite a bit, making this... Uh, Lug to lug, effectively, they're they're both 48 millimeter lug to lug, but with the end link, it puts this at 54. So uh, the uh, the San Martin is at 51. So so this extension out here is uh, a little bit bothersome, uh, and pin and collar also a little bit bothersome. But I think this bracelet is just absolutely elegant. The taper from 20 down to uh, 16, I believe it is. Uh, it. it it's just very, very elegant, and the uh, the the thinness of the links just make it that much more uh, eye catching and eye pleasing. And the finishing on the bracelet is also very, very good. So the bracelet on the Heimdaller is going to get an eight for me. So the bracelet on the San Martin is all brushed. There is no high polished on the sides. So that is different from the actual Submariner, uh, although not uh, not too bad of a deal breaker. Um, it is a, a lot thicker. It, it It's not a lot thicker in measurement, but it does feel a lot thicker uh, in person. And it also appears that the taper, that it doesn't taper as much, even though mathematically it does. So there's something with the eye that makes this seem to not taper uh, as much as the Heimdaller version. But all in all, really good, really solid bracelet. Um, finishing looks good. Um, but even though this has screw pins against the pin and collar of the Heimdaller, I just can't get over how elegant uh, the Heimdaller bracelet is uh, compared to this one. Even though this is an outstanding bracelet and going up against any other watch, I would think it was absolutely, you know, the way to go for sure. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, I don't know. You know, I think it's very hard to choose between the two. I think they both have advantages. So they are going to score on the bracelet a tie of eight. So sticking with the San Martin, the clasp is the next category. And you know that I love this particular clasp. I think this is just about the best clasp you can get that isn't the uh, Rolex Glide Lock or Glide Lock inspired. Uh, it's very robust. It's well made. It's well machined. The finishing on it is great. Uh, closing it, really secure. Beautiful etching of the San Martin logo on the back. Uh, this is uh, really hard to beat. Really, really hard to beat. So the clasp on the San Martin is pretty much your standard, your, your one upgrade uh, milled clasp over folded metal clasps. This is about one step above that. You have a fold over uh, secure latch and then double pushers to open, but just three micro adjustments. The uh, clasp on the San Martin has six micro adjustments. So you're gonna be able to get the perfect fit. And as I said, I had to take this to the jeweler about three times. So. Also, uh, really well done uh, logo etched on the clasp there, but I think there's really no comparison on the clasp here. This clasp gets a seven and the San Martin will get a 10. So the next category is loom and I will give you 10 guesses on which watch is which. Bro, the no comparison here, uh, really. The uh, Heimdaller on the right, uh, it does have BGW-9. They both have BGW-9, but there's some sort of coating uh, that has been put on the Heimdaller that just makes it fade away. Uh, it, it's really, uh, it's much brighter in person uh, than it is uh, on this uh, camera shot, but uh, 
clearly you see the uh, the uh, San Martin is uh, much brighter. It's much more clear, uh, and I uh, really attribute that to them uh, using BGW9 in its original form. So the loom on the Heim dollar does get an eight. It looks a lot better in person than it does on camera. And the San Martin, I mean, really, it's one of the best loomed watches I've, I've come across in quite some time. And that is going to get a 10. Final category today is going to be durability. And really, um, I've, uh, you know, been wearing both of these watches for a, a good amount of time. And uh, I find both of their durabilities very, very good. But there is a big difference between the two of them. Uh, the Heimdaller's water resistance is 300 meters, and that's the same as the actual Rolex Submariner. Now, you kind of got to take uh, their word for it. Uh, you know, Heimdaller, it's a good company, and, and I have no reason to believe that that isn't the case. But the San Martin only has uh, 200 meters of water resistance, and you could argue the fact that that's all you really ever need. And yes, there's certainly a valid argument for that. Uh, but if you're going along the lines of the actual sub, you get 300 meters of water resistance with this Heimdaller. And I think that's pretty cool in regards to uh, what you're getting for your money. And that was the last category. So if you are playing at home, you will find the Heimdaller has a score of 57. <laughs> and the San Martin with a drum roll, please. Fire up the grill, Mom, and start putting on that poo-poo sandwich because this scored a 60. Yeah, it's still very, very close between these two guys. Um, but this San Martin with the bezel action, with the loom, um, the bracelet is very, very well done, and the clasp. It was certainly a worthy challenger today uh, against the Heimdaller. It takes the cake. I think it's a great watch. Tell me what you guys think in the comments. Uh, these are really the only categories I could think of to do, so I don't know, guys. Great watch. They're both great. If you, either one that you buy, I think you'd be super, super happy. But uh, I will see you next week.